my name is Elise Shadler. I am the program manager of the Vermont Urban and Community Forestry Program. We are um, housed at the Vermont Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, but we're also a partnership with the University of Vermont Extension Service. So we basically provide technical, financial, and educational assistance to towns statewide. So uh, we mostly work with all things related to public trees, which are the trees that are planted in public spaces like the right-of-way or on public parks, um, village greens, town forests. So we work with about 100 towns a year in some capacity. You know, urban forestry is as much about people as it is about trees. Um, so, you know, there's on the one side, like having a degree in natural uh, resource management, like it's very tangible to be able to work with a tree and um, to make sure people understand the biology of the tree, how it works, how it's interacting with its environment. Um, trees provide a lot of benefits and we're just learning more and more and more about um, what, what they're doing for us in these populated places like our urban areas. Um, so that's fun and then on the other side of it I really like working with people and I really like uh, being able to empower people to take charge of something like a tree which is so tangible. and. Um, we do a lot of uh, grants to municipalities, so working with towns to really think about how to manage their urban and community forests better is really engaging and fun work. You know, I think people are, again, are like really starting to think about uh, the role that they play in our built spaces. Um, and our, our job is really to help town staff and volunteers foster those benefits. Um, so I, I'd say in general they're, tr they're treated well, <laughs> but it's all about resources and capacity and a lot of towns just don't have that capacity. It's a very young field, urban forestry. and. Um, uh, really wasn't even recognized as a, a phrase or a, a profession until like the 1990s. Um, so it's it's very um, there's a lot of like room for growth and learning. So we're just doing some routine maintenance of the trees around here. Uh, we got to keep them lifted for pedestrians walking and for trees. Or I mean for cars and stuff going under them. We're getting ready on the sidewalks for the winter where the plows will come down, so we gotta lift everything up. So you can see some of these branches are drooping down a bit, so I'm just trying to cut, keep it up, keep it nice and shaped, and then some of these guys back here are getting up in the crown of the tree and loosening things up, getting all the dead wood out of there. We have some honey locusts right here. They're really pretty. We also have a lot of lindens over here, which I find really pretty. Um, classic street trees, you know. Uh, I'm Andrew. I'm. Uh, this is my first year working with these guys. Um, I'm still a student up at UVM studying forestry and horticulture. Um, so I'm really pumped to have this job and be working for the city. Yeah. Uh, well. Uh we can we can talk at ad nauseum about the benefits that trees in built environments and around houses provide, but we're trying to improve one um, you know knowledge about um, picking the right tree for the right space, for example. So you want to uh, the motto is plant the right tree the right way in the right place. Um, so helping people have a better understanding of um, different species and um, you know what where what they can plant where so for example you know here we've got overhead wires um, so we can't really plant anything that's going to get really big on that side of the road um, there's also these underground utilities like our, our gas lines and our, our water pipes um, that we need to be aware of we're also in a very confined soil space so you know there's only about seven six seven feet um, wide of this green space to plant in so um, really improving the knowledge um, about what tree might succeed here and how to foster the maintenance of that tree to live for a really long time because one of the things that we know is that if you plant a tree in the ground and it only lives about eight nine years or doesn't even get any bigger than like this this locust here it's not going to be really providing the kind of benefits we want to see whereas if you have these large street trees, 
um, that are have mature canopy. They're providing an amazing amount of stormwater, um, water quality, air quality, um, noise pollution, light pollution, um, tree equity. These these words are providing all of these benefits. So um, we're trying to improve the knowledge around species as well as how to grow long-lived big trees. What is tree equity? Okay, so this is a new this is a new. Um, phrase that uh, we're really just in the past like, couple months really has been starting to roll out. There's an organization called American Forests that just released this really powerful tool called a tree equity tool. And so they're basically looking at um, urban areas and relating the amount of tree canopy to other demographic and socioeconomic factors. So um, there's this process that happened in the early 1900s called redlining, where they basically, bankers would decide where to give loans for home purchases or business purchases um, and draw these red lines on maps and basically categorize different neighborhoods as category A, B, C, or D. And, and now there's all this research looking at that historical practice, which was stopped and it was outlawed in like the 1970s. But historic, we can now see the ramifications of those neighborhoods that were ranked category D that were chosen to be because they they were not predominantly white upper middle class um, those have far less tree canopy so we're in a place now where we can say okay this historical pro um, this historical procedure process uh, led us to a place now where we have much less trees um, that are providing much less benefits so um, so we can strategically think about um, identifying those areas and planting more trees in those places Power, pretty powerful tool. You know, a lot of research around um, marginalized communities that, uh, you know, have never really had trees in, on their blocks. It's just very, a lot of concrete and a lot of um, impervious surfaces that um, if a city were just to come in and just plant trees without interacting with the neighbors and like really making it an engaging process and fostering the trust to um, empower people to really have ownership over those trees, then they might not do as well. Oh, well, you know, I don't think I would change anything about our program. We're, we're really, um, we've got a great team. There's five of us. We work with, like I said, about 100 towns a year. We work with a lot of volunteers and, and people that are engaged in their towns. Um, we also work with our county foresters. We work with other forestry professionals. So I, I would not change anything. I'm, 